The term method acting gets tossed around like a hot baby. Most actors think that they know what method acting is, and many uh, don't realize that the techniques that they've learned are actually based on method acting. And I want to kind of dispel some of the myths about method acting and talk about what it really is, how it started, and all that. Method acting kind of got its start with Stanislavski. He was tired of seeing actors presenting uh, emotions on stage and not having any real life connections with the character. So he developed a method of acting that encourages the actor to discover the motivations of a character and what they need, what they want, how they're going to get it, and the obstacles that are in their way. Reading between the lines of the script and discovering more about the character than what is on the page. Now there's a couple common misconceptions about method acting. Some people think that it means that you lose a lot of weight for a role or you gain a lot of weight for a role. Actor Christian Bale famously lost a lot of weight for The Machinist. And Matthew McConaughey lost a lot of weight when he played the character that lost a lot of weight due to AIDS in Dallas Buyers Club. So people think that method acting means losing a lot of weight or gaining a lot of weight and trying to build uh, a character out of that. And while it certainly helps to play a character like that, to, to live in their skin and actually feel like they feel, that's not method acting. That's just character preparation. That's actors preparing for a role and really putting their, their whole life and energy into it. But it's not a method of acting, so to speak. And then other people think that method acting means staying in character, digging into the soul of your character and living their life and only living their life and never uh, breaking character. Uh, even if you're offset, you, you expect everybody to call you by your character's name and treat you like the character the whole time. And that's, that's there's some actors out there, Daniel Day-Lewis and people that, that, um, that really get into the character and stay into character. But that's not part of method acting either, really. Konstantin Stanislavski wrote the book on actors, the, 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 the really primary book, and he, before he wrote that, or as he was writing it, he played around with his students staying in character even when they weren't in the scene, when they went home and all that stuff like that. And he found that there was really diminishing returns on that, that it really wasn't an effective uh, a way of getting into character or staying in character or, or, or discovering the character. So he kind of abandoned that idea. But many actors kind of hold on to that idea that they have to be in character all of the time. Stanislavski developed this method. And basically, it's really where you an actor reads between the lines of a script. Um, not just what's on the page, but what the other actors say, what the stage directions say. Um, the actions that a character takes is more important than the emotions that they feel. Uh, the emotions lead to the actions in some cases, but it's more important to, to lay out a blueprint of the actions that a character takes. And then you discover through work, uh, through discovery of the character and their backstory, their, their history, how they came to be where they are, how they came to be in this scene with these people, how they know the people in them. Answering all of these questions helps you discover your overarching objective uh, in, the, in the whole script and then an objective in each scene that you're in that's like a mini objective. And then each beat in a scene can be an objective too. But basically you get an objective, then you discover the obstacles that are in the way of that character, the things that, are, they're, they're, that conflict with what they want to accomplish. And then you discover the actions that they take, the tactics that they take, the words that they say in order to overcome those obstacles and or achieve their objectives. So that's kind of the system in a, in a nutshell. And anybody who follows those those blueprints is kind of method acting. One crucial aspect of the method is that the character lives outside of the script, not outside of the reality of the show. You don't need to carry it into your own personal life, but the character has a life outside of the scene, and it's up to the actor to discover what happened right before the scene, what happens after the scene, what happens in between the scenes. What is the glue that makes this character tick? What are the personality traits that, that uh, they bring this character to life, and how did that character get those personality traits? What kind of uh, pinnacles in their life made them the way that they are? You know, were they injured in the war that gave them a limp that caused them to be an aggressive type of person or a grumpy type of person, something like that. You know, you want to pinpoint 
the things about the character that are important to the script. Now, some people go and do full backstories with their character and full histories and stuff and dig into their child psychology and, and some people that really works, but it's not necessary for the method. You just need to understand what causes the actor to do the things that they do within the script. And sometimes you dig a little bit deeper into the past of that character or the future of that character in order to determine that. Stanislavski taught acting is doing. And so his primary force of script analysis is what does the character do? What does the character do to get what they want? What does the character do to overcome it? Acting, they, what do they act upon? And that could be what they say or what they physically do. And emotions and feelings are just sort of an esoteric thing. They don't necessarily play to the back of the house, so to speak. Emotions and feelings may give a character a stimulus to drive them forward, but they're not the primary factor. It's what the actor does that counts. Method acting is, given the circumstances of the play, what would I do? How would I react? How would I behave? Then you layer in the character on top of that. How would the character behave? How would the character react? What would the character do? Another thing of method acting is an actor drawing from their own experience or their own imagination in order to behave appropriately for the character in the given circumstances that they're presented. And different people who have followed and borrowed aspects of the method uh, in, their, in their teachings, including Strasberg and Stella Adler and Uta Hagen and Larry Moss and all, all kinds of pinnacle acting teachers out there, Meisner is another one. They each borrow an aspect of the method and then they change it a little bit or they focus on one particular aspect in the training. Now the term method acting actually didn't start with Stanislavski. He created this method, but it was really Lee Strasberg that uh, coined the phrase method. And, and when we think of method acting in the modern sense, uh, in the sense of staying in this character and whatnot, we're really thinking of Lee Strasberg's method. Stanislavski would take people's inner emotions and would, would encourage his actors to recall emotional experiences from their past and then to overlay them onto the character and put them into the situation there. That caused actors to kind of go into this therapy mode where they were analyzing how they felt in the past and recalling traumatic moments perhaps and and, and bringing them back up in and trying to adjust them to the character. But that kind of changed uh, in a lot in how a lot of other teachers approached it. For instance, Strasberg use the sensations that you feel around a particular emotion or a time in your life and focusing really on the physical and mental sensations that an actor feels and trying to recall those and put them into a character. Uh, rather than trying to recall an event, you you take the time outside of rehearsal to recall the, the event from your past and you remember the sensations that you feel, how, how your body held, where you held tension, things like that. And then you translate those sensations onto the character and forget about recalling things actively while you're doing your scene work. This allows actors to not have to fake or force emotions um, while doing a scene, but also not have to um, recall them. Sanford Meisner uh, developed a technique based on the method uh, where you use objectives and obstacles and whatnot, but he starts with actors responding to each other actively. So one of the first exercises you do in the Meisner technique is you take a nonsense phrase like, uh, you know, my shirt is yellow, your shirt is yellow, and you, you repeat it back and forth until it becomes just sort of nonsense. You're responding exactly to what the actor says, but you're not acting, you're not actively responding, you're not doing anything, you're just giving an honest response. So Meisner is about um, listening and reacting to the stimulus that you're given from the other actors on stage, and that is the primary focus of Meisner. Meisner is all about approaching the actor through spontaneity and real-time reaction. He encourages the actor to get out of their head and to just respond to the stimulus that's given to them. The actor is responding instinctively and reacting to the environment that is around them. Meisner focuses on reactions and repetition and spontaneity and improvisation. 
Tadashi Suzuki, the Suzuki technique is more of a physicalization technique. So that's where you take the physicalizations of your character, maybe a limp or tension that they hold in their body or trauma that they've had from their childhood. And then you exaggerate that to a, almost a clownish state until, you know, it, it, it's big, bigger than life. And then you systematically pull those physicalizations back uh, into more of a real, uh, realistic portrayal. Now, Uta Hagen doesn't have you do recall exercises, but instead uses substitutions. In her teachings, you think of yourself as the actor in the situation. If I was in this situation, what would motivate me to take this action? If, if you can't motivate that as an actor, if it doesn't make sense to you as an actor, then you find something similar in your life and you recall that and you say, okay, I'm gonna just take that and put it in here as a motivating factor for my character. So using substitutions to kind of motivate actions is what Uta Hagen is all about. Uta Hagen also said, emotions and feelings sort of live in a vacuum unless they motivate the character to do a certain action. And she believes it is the character's actions that reveal the character throughout a play. Stella Adler is similar to Uta Hagen, but she does not have you recall substitutions from your life and use them in. She draws more from the imagination of an actor. So Stella Adler would say you do things as if you were doing this. So for instance, if a character is panicked, you would say they're panicked as if their water just broke and they're about to have a baby. You know, you imagine what it would be like if my water broke right now and I was having a baby, how panicked I would be to get to the hospital. You apply that as if to this character who is super panicked and it gives you something to play. So that's how Stella Adler's approach is different. You're not borrowing from a, a known experience of your life, but you're imagining what you would do in a certain experience. Modern acting coach Larry Moss is all about uh, the method as well. He uses Objectives, obstacles, and intentions are his three keywords. And that, again, it's very close to Stanislavski's approach. You have an overriding objective, you have an objective in each scene, something your character wants and desires, and then you have obstacles that are put in that character's way. And the more you can play over an obstacle and come around an obstacle, the more drama you create. And the intention is the actions that the character takes or doesn't take in order to achieve their objective or to surpass or uh, you know, get past their obstacle. Warner Laughlin is another Hollywood acting coach and she encourages you to use the script as a blueprint to dig into uh, the read between the lines and really study the script and take it all the way back to a character's childhood and find out what motivated them in their childhood or what suppressed them in their childhood. It's called a base human emotion and it's something that, that a character got because of something that happened to them in their childhood, traumatic or what otherwise, that led them to be the way that they are today. And once you discover that uh, base human emotion, which is all the clues for that should be in the script that's given, and you can figure that out by using her techniques. And then once you discover that base human emotion, it gives you something to play and it gives you um, a, a much more fleshed out character life. So that's very method in its way um, in terms of all the study, all, of all the background that you, you create for a character. And those are just a few of the famous acting teachers and coaches out there over the years. And, and, and that's basically a nutshell too. And honestly, I have not taken courses in many of these techniques myself. I've just studied them a little bit. So, you know, if you have taken courses in those, you're probably gonna have a much more fleshed out and better understanding of these approaches. But they all kind of find their base in the method, the method technique. Think of method as using a script as a blueprint to dig into a character deeper, to read between the lines, and then to discover that the actions that the character takes to overcome their obstacles and achieve their objectives. That's method in a nutshell, and that's all you gotta know about it. Here's a video on objectives, and here's a video on overcoming obstacles, and you can dig in a little deeper and find out more about those, uh, those aspects of the method.